Hello, most of you already know me. My name is Emily, and I am here today to introduce Maggie. Maggie will be giving us a lesson on worry. Hi everyone, like Emily said, my name is Maggie, and we're going to be talking about what the Bible has to say about worry and you know, a little story about worry. So let's jump in. There is a seven-year-old girl named Maria. She's really worried. She keeps hearing all this scary stuff about a virus and people getting sick. It's just a lot. So much like these rocks on the phone, Maria's worries are weighing her down. And we're going to see how removing these worries will make Maria feel a lot better and even this phone will float to the top again. So Maria's worried because she heard about the virus. She first told her mom she was worried and her mom gave her a big hug. Just like that, her first worry was removed. Second, Maria told her mom that she was worried her dad would get sick at work. And her mom told her about all the precautions that they're doing. Their social distancing, they're wearing a face mask, and they're even washing everything down every day. And just like that, Maria's second worry was removed. Last, Maria's mom told her she didn't always have to wear a mask or gloves when she was out playing on the playground. That if she was careful and there wasn't a lot of kids around, and she washed her hands for long enough with warm water, she was able to play outside and ride her bike, just like normal. And just like that, Maria's third worry was removed. And wow, look at that. Yay. Just like the phone, she's a lot lighter. So let's look at what the Bible has to say. Well, first we're going to do a little background before we get into the verse. And the background is people wanting to store up all their possessions. Their food, their clothes, their jewelry. And Jesus said, you guys don't need that while you're here on earth. Your Heavenly Father will provide for you with all of these needs. Jesus is saying, don't worry, God's got it. Yay! So let's look at what we're gonna, the passage we're going to be examining today. It's Matthew 6, 25 through 34. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in their barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add to a single moment on your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was he not dressed as beautifully as they are? And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and not thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have such little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of the unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So what did we learn from this lesson? Well, first, we learned that the birds and the flowers, they don't worry. They just do what they're told, what God asks them to do, and God provides Yay! the rest. God provides the rain and the sunshine for the flowers to grow. God provides the food for the birds to live. Second, we learned that we shouldn't worry because God provides. He provides for us because he cares for us. We're more valuable than just the birds and the flowers, but that also means that we need to follow what God asks us to do. And that means maybe we need to listen to our parents when they ask us to wash our hands for long enough. Maybe it's listening to our parents and telling them we don't feel good, that we feel really cold or that our tummy hurts. Maybe it's listening to what the governors have to say and following the guidelines they put in place. Social distance, wear your mask, make sure you wash your hands, limiting how far we go out. So. Now that we learned what this lesson's telling us, what do we do when we get worried? Well, there's four easy steps when we get worried. One, recognize that you're concerned or worried. When you're worried, you might feel scared and not know why. You might feel lightheaded or have a headache, 
You think your tummy might hurt. Second, name what you're worried about. Putting a name on what's bothering, what bothering you helps a lot. Maybe you're worried that your parents will get sick. Maybe you're worried that school won't reopen. Name your worry. Third, talk to someone about these worries. Go talk to mom or dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, someone. Talking about your worries will make you feel a lot better. And fourth, pray to God. Don't worry, because God's got it. Give it to God. So let's look back at Lucia's story. What did she do? Did she follow these steps? She did. First, Maria recognized she was worried. Second, she named it. She told her mom that she was worried that dad would get sick. Fourth, her mom and Maria prayed about it. They gave it to God. So when you're feeling worried, remember that we're not meant to worry, that we need to give it to God. Don't worry, God's got it. <laughs> Okay, so we just learned about worry and some steps to help alleviate that worry. Another fun activity to make your worry seem not as scary. This is your worry monster. It's available PDF on, on the email that this link was sent on. And the steps are on the bottom. So first, write all your worries down in the monster. Second, draw a silly face on the monster. Third, color it. And remember that your worries can sometimes be silly, but ultimately, if you give it to God, you'll be okay. Don't worry, God's got it.